This is the Nevada County Sierra College Campus Walking Tour. I'm your host, Lisa Redfern. My guest today is Donna Brazil Blocky. I'm the supervisor of campus operations here at Sierra College Nevada County Campus. I have been an employee at Sierra College for 33 years and I have been at this campus, Nevada County Campus, since it opened in 1996. We start at N12. We walk into where the pond is in the middle, follow along the right side of the pond, make a stop at N7 where we'll be talking about water issues. Then we cross over to the left towards the bell tower and we conclude at N4, which is the gathering area. The first stop on our campus walking tour is at N12. And for the building numbers, we are referring to the campus map. As we are standing at N12 and we turn around and look out across the way, over past the Briar Patch, on top of that hill, you'll see a big building. That is the Lytton Engineering Building. Charles Vincent Lytton, 1904 to 1972. Charles Lytton was a Bay Area engineer who gained fame for his glass lathes and vacuum tubes. In 1948, he received the President's Certificate of Merit from the Army and Navy for his work in the Wartime Office of Scientific Research and Development. In 1952, he brought his glass lathe company called Lytton Engineering Laboratories up to Grass Valley. In Donna's comment, Charlie refers to Charles Lytton's firstborn son, Charles Jr. Charlie, as a kid, actually lived in the upstairs of the Lytton building. And I don't think it was ever actually used as a hospital, but that's what it was built for. It was supposed to be a VA hospital. And then, of course, Lytton Engineering moved from the Bay Area into it. According to the Nevada County Business News, he offered $135,000 for the unoccupied Memorial Hospital building located in an orchard on a hill overlooking Grass Valley. He then moved Lytton Engineering Laboratory into the unfinished 66,000 square foot building. He repurposed a 5,000 square foot wing on the third floor for the family living quarters. Charles's widow began negotiations with Sierra College for the land, but she died before it was complete. Gerald and Gove, Sierra College president, and Robert Ross, a local optician and veteran, worked together to secure funding for the project. You'll find both their names on the bell tower wall bricks, and the road leading from Briar Patch up the hill is Robert Ross Way. As we finish with N12, we're moving over towards the ponds in the middle of campus. One of the really cool things about the Nevada County campus is the wildlife that inhabits, uh, cohabits, habitates with us. Um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, we're in the middle of Grass Valley, but we're a 105 acre campus in the middle of Grass Valley and only about 35 to 40 acres, you know, actually has um, the buildings and landscape campus and parking lots, right? Well, here's an example um, this year of a recent um, buck who was scraping his antlers um, on this tree and it's all over campus. Um, what's really cool is to come to work in the morning and actually see five, six, eight deer bedded down, kind of hiding. They like a few different places on campus. We also have fox. Um, in fact, our groundskeeper this morning, Jimmy, um, was walking into campus and a fox was, was scoping him out and then finally ran away. Um, we have had bear sightings on the Lytton Trail, uh, um, also mountain lions. Daily Morning Union, February 4th, 1903. Who wants a lion? A big fellow reported on Old Miner's Ranch near town. There's all sorts of sport awaiting some hunter bold who will venture into snowy hills of Old Miner's Ranch on the Old Nevada Road behind the Richard Noel place. The ponds, when we originally opened in 96, were stocked mysteriously with koi fish. Nishikikoi, as they're called in Japan, is the national fish 
of the country. It's a carp that's mutated. Originally, in China, they were kept in rice fields and bred to become goldfish. In Japan, they were the ones that developed the koi. Koi breeding is a lot like horse and dog breeding. What we have here are butterfly koi, and those are not really considered koi as far as breeding standards in Japan. They would call these mutts. And how they came about is that the carp were bred with Indonesian long finned carp, which caused them to have the very long flowing tails. I'm still going to refer to them as koi, even though they're not officially koi. One website that I read said they like to swim in a clockwise direction. I'm not sure if that's true because I've seen them swimming in all directions, but it would be worth standing and watching to see if they do like that. They are omnivores. They eat anything people will eat. The fish in the ponds at Sierra College take care of their own needs. Uh, they eat algae. They could eat vegetables and fruit. They mate in the warm weather, spring and summer. When the females are ready to drop eggs, the males butt them to try to get the eggs to come out so that they can cover them with the male parts. And the parents will eat the eggs. After seven days, the ones that have survived hatch into fry, which are teeny tiny little baby fish. Predators include herons, raccoons, otters, possums, birds of prey, house cats, coyotes, snapping turtles, snakes, and bullfrogs. Well, they're all amazing. Some of them are really big, some of them are small. Um, and of note, we've received many calls over the years of people who are trying to decommission their ponds, and especially koi ponds, and wanting to place their fish in our ponds. Unfortunately, that's illegal and we can't allow it because they transmit diseases. They multiply on their own. Um, we also have mosquito fish that have come up through the irrigation um, system. We don't do anything other than turn on irrigation water during irrigation season. That feeds the fish enough. And during the winter, the fish actually go down to the depths of the pond where it's not as cold and they stay down there for the winter. They go into a torpor, which is a type of hibernation. It is said that when these fish do that, it extends their life. But average, they live about 30 years. So these fish in here could very well have been some of the original ones that were put in the pond from when Sierra College was first built. So koi in Japan stands for friendship and affection and luck, prosperity. Next, we're going towards N7, which is where large water towers were located at one point. Before the campus was built, the NID, Nevada Irrigation District, had two giant um, water storage tanks up on this hill. One was about in this area, and the other one was over by the N11 Art Building. And there was actually a road from East Main Street that we still use as a trail that came, came up here. There was further plans and an easement granted when we purchased this property to put two ginormous <laughs> I don't know how many tens of thousands of gallon tanks where the N7 building is. And the cool thing was, the reason they put it up on this hill, of course, was for the hydraulic drop down into town. We were able to work with NID to buy the lease back so that we could build this building here. The Morning Union, Thursday, February 9th, 1933. Water flows without stop in reservoirs. With 160 acres of water flowing over the water we're of the Grass Valley Municipal Reservoirs last night. Water problems of this city appeared practically at an end. The flow did not stop during the entire day, but diminished somewhat when anchor ice was found in this canal near the Prisk Ranch. Ditch walkers broke the fast forming ice and the large flow of water continued. It is believed certain by local city officials that no fear need be held of any additional water lack or water rations. Of course, it's a, a, a beautiful landscape design element for the campus, which most people who just drive around Robert Ross Way don't even know is here. But they were designed actually so that we can pump Nevada Irrigation District water from the irrigation ditch that's down on Sierra College Drive, 
we pump up the main pond and then we irrigate campus. It was also a requirement from the state fire marshal in case there's no water service, we would still have some access to fight a fire on campus. Finally, we just go across the way over towards the bell tower into the gathering area. This is N4 and the final stop on our walking tour. When the campus originally was built, there was a very large mound of lawn here. It was a pretty high one, probably 15 feet high. Um, that was kind of a, a, an attraction for kids. And they would come and go climb to the top and roll to the bottom. Um, and it wasn't very conducive for kind of the quad feel of a college campus. Probably in the hmm, early 2000s, we were approached by the Boundies, Mr. and Mrs. Boundy. They, they wanted to make some kind of community donation to Sierra College because they met and married while at Sierra College. And um, they chose this campus over the other Sierra College campuses because Mr. Boundy actually grew up in Grass Valley and used to play on this hill when it was an orchard. In the 1900 census, Thomas Boundy was still living in Cornwall. He came over sometime around 1910, where he worked for the Prisk brothers in the pear orchards. He met and married his wife in secret in San Francisco, and he had been found a reliable and trustworthy man. Their son, Richard, is the namesake for the gathering area at the Sierra College campus. He graduated in the 1950s from UC Davis with a degree in agriculture. His wife was a career school teacher. They are buried in the Newcastle Cemetery. They gave it a lovely donation and we worked with a local landscape company and came up with a, a design which they approved. We actually um, did a contest with our environmental horticulture students uh, for a design and we used those, we gave those to a landscape company to use certain elements out of it, right? Out of what the students came up with. And um, we gave them a few different designs to choose from and they chose this. Um, we had the mound, we called it the mound, um, the hill mound removed. And they basically opened up this bell tower quad, um, but they wanted to actually have a place where students could sit and, um, you know, gather and, and eat or just chat with friends. And um, so we're grateful to them for that. I'm standing in front of the bell tower um, and this is our bell tower quad. This is where we have special events and where we hold commencement every year and Godoti holds their high school graduation. The bell was actually uh, originally donated um, to the foundation um, by a local donor and um, it actually is a carillon system. So it tolls on the hour from 6 a or 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and then uh, it will play a tune. I think there's 3,000 tunes it goes through. Over the last 26 years, we do get phone calls from the Escaton residents if our carillon bell tolls too fast or too soon or too late, they call and let us know because they take their medications by those bells. And I have gotten dozens of calls. We have a time capsule here in the middle of the quad. It was put here um, it looked August 17th of 1996, right before our semester started. And it's to be opened April 25th of 2026, so not too far in the future. I asked Donna about the most satisfying aspect of her job. Commencement and seeing students finish their goals. I'm typically on the operational side of things and not necessarily on the instructional student side of things um, at this point in my career. And to actually see and hear them speak about their accomplishments, it, it's just heartfelt and it, it it's the reason we do what we do. We are stewards of, you know, this campus and um, for our students and for our community, and we take it serious.
Don't forget to check out Little Mountain Publishing for the other tour components of Lytton Hill. I have a history video covering the farms and the families that lived here, a time travel musical playlist to listen to as you're walking the loop trail around the outer edges of the campus. And I have a map narration that will show you sites that you will find interesting along the way. Thanks for listening and history hiking with Lisa Redfern.